Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to kick the realness. Uh, we've been waiting for this one for a minute. The man everyone has been talking about after that control verse, my bro, K. Dot Kendrick Lamar is on the phone. Kendrick, how are you, sir? What up, bro? All right, first things first. Um, how long did it take you to realize the level of the impact of the verse coming out? Because I know you were traveling. So when did you realize that you had set off a crazy firestorm? Uh, it, took, it took a couple of days. I was in the UK for a second. So you can't really feel the energy out there like it'll be up in the States. But um, I realized I got some real, real good internet servers, you know, a particular moment. And I seen like a bunch of response ready. And I knew for a fact, you know, that I guess it inspired a few cats to get out there and do their thing. Let's talk about what the inspiration was from the verse. I mean, my assumption was this was a verse you did a while ago. Did you think about the level of impact that it would have, or was it just a feature verse that you knocked out? Uh, from, the, from the moment I started doing the verse, it was really just a feature verse. You know, she really wanted to get on there and, and just rap and put my best foot forward. And, um, you know, really just challenge myself, you know, to write some, some bars, but I didn't think it would it'll be, you know, whatever it's supposed to be, whatever people think it's supposed to be. So there are two levels to this song that got everyone so charged up um let's go let's go one by one first and foremost the 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 names that you mentioned you mentioned a lot of people's names people that you've worked with and a lot of people fans got very excited to hear about you know to hear that competitive nature between you and these other dudes who are in the game um was obviously you say point blank that you're trying to have you know, you want it to be competitive and you're trying to make, you know, be number one and have Cats fans never listen to them again and you're talking that ish. Did you hear from any of the artists you mentioned right after the fact and were you worried that that, that could affect relationships you have with people? No, I, I didn't hear from nobody, but I wasn't aware of the fact that it uh, affect relationships, you know. At the end of the day, you know, if you listen to the, to the line, you know, these cats that I feel like it inspired the game, you know, and they inspired to be the best just like I feel. I inspired to be the best, you know, so if they're competitive and, and you know, they respect the culture of hip hop, I don't feel like it should be any type of, uh, feel ill feel that you have towards it you know um no i agree although i'm not I, now my thought is i think there's a chance some people will feel a, a way about it because of the fact that it garnered it garnered the attention that it did and it put an emphasis on lyrics again and you know yeah, yeah I, I can believe yeah, i can believe that part go ahead no so wow. it's, so it's like for other cats out there who are making dope music you you kind of you kind of throw this bullet out there that's like damn yeah you can make dope music and be lyrical and have the whole world talking about you and I think that will inspire people and get people a little bit tight I mean we don't know who that will be but I do think that's possible I mean it's like this when you get you know your Twitter you got friends and you got social media you know putting putting a situation at at a high level it maybe you know makes someone feel uh a certain way or you know people just in general in the hip hop culture so uh, I, can, I can feel that I can agree with that you know it's, it's, it's rap man and people that I respect they know I respect them and the whole point of the culture is to elevate the culture at the end of the day now let's talk specifically about what was a big deal in New York even though frankly I, I thought it was stupid because I thought people took it too seriously I thought you were just my assumption was you were just spitting that spitting that yin-yang and and referencing um, a corrupt line from a while back. But when you said the King of New York line and when you replaced Biggie's name and said Kendrick, Jay-Z, and Nas, there are people in New York who certainly seem to feel uncomfortable and like you overstepped some sort of boundary. How would you respond to those to those listeners? Man, it made me go back in and made me feel like I got to probably... I'm down, down my legs nowadays, you know, for the people to, you know, to take it away out of context the way they did. But the irony behind it all is, you know, the main ass that really understood the context of the line was the actual kings of New York, you know, the cats that I sat down with this past, you know, week. And really got understanding that, you know, the 
it's not about the coast. It's not about, you know, what side we on. It's about being great as Biggie, as Pop. You know, the two cats that I reference, you know, from Jump. You know, and I feel like I'm a student. I'm a student of, you know, the work that they did. And eventually when I put down 20 years in the game, I can eventually plant my foot and have that same type of legacy. But, you know, for people that try to make it out into something that is not, you know, I never take the the history behind what Pac laid or what B.I.G. laid. And to keep it 100 with you, Snoop will always be number one. And I'm from the West Coast, and he gave me that. You know, but out of respect for my big homie, I understand it. You know, he he, he laid down. I only got one album, my homie. One album out. I got years to be doing this. So at the end of the day, Snoop will always be my big homie. And um, the legends that came before me, they will always stand tall where they at. You know, but I can't stop myself from wanting to be great just like them. What did I know you saw Jay Z. Uh what did Jay I know and I and I heard from Ebro that Jay was a fan of the verse. What did Jay tell you? I mean, that's that's classified between me and him, you know, but it was all love, all respect. You know, same way with Diddy, and the same way with a few other other cats. You know, I won't get up into all that, but at the end of the day, man, I feel as though you know you have certain cats that really gonna you know take it to the next level and, and make it a rivalry thing, you know, and try to bring back that old thing. You know, that that's that's old school, homie. Nobody do that. We were out here, black black men out here trying to uh, you know uplift the culture. You know, my first show that I saw was in New York. You know what I'm saying? So. I always looked at that place as a place that respected me and my lyrics and me respecting the culture and the birthplace of it. You know what I'm saying? So I think the ones that really took it out of context was the people that, we you know, want to uh, grab an opportunity that's off the fact of the hype of the record rather than actually tuning in and, and listening and knowing how hungry I am. A lot of people think it's about talent. Um, that's where they get it wrong. I'm saying I'm the most hungry in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm yeah. I respect the legends in the game. I respect, you know what I'm saying, people that, that done it before me, you know, people that lost their lives over this. You know what I'm saying? So, because of what they laid down, I'm going to try to get it harder, you know, and, and breathe it and live it. And that's that's the point of the whole, the whole verse, what I was trying to convey through that verse. All the ignorance behind it, you can kill that noise. You know, it'll never be like that again with two coast rivals. Not, not on my behalf, you know what I'm saying? Not while I'm doing this, you know? And I think the OGs in the game will want that anyway. You know, they want that competitive nature back and no bloodshed over, you feel me? I'm way too wise and I'm way too, too you know, uh, polished to not get caught up in the hype of the media. But what I'm scared is, cats that's not that polished and they getting caught up in what their Twitter responses are saying, what, you know, they homies around them saying and people gassing them up. And they try to take it to the next level. Nah, you know that's 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 not cheap. That's not gangster. You know what I'm saying? So, um, there were a lot. Obviously, there were a lot of rebuttal responses to uh, control. Um, I had an argument with Papoose on the air last week, and I'm not sure if you heard it, but you know, Pap, of course, reps for Brooklyn and New York very hard, and I thought he went almost a little bit too hard at you on on his response and went a different way with it. But I'm curious. What were your thoughts about the uh, the Papoose response? Oh, uh, man, I, I thought it was comical. If, if anything, it had me laughing, you know. But not only that, I, I respect the game, and I, I understand, you know, when, when opportunity presents itself, you know, you got to make a way for yourself. You know what I'm saying? That was a perfect opportunity to go out there and make a response and get that buzz, you know, and he got that buzz going for itself, so. At the end of the day, I want to see everybody eating. That ain't no ill will. You know, he eating off of it. He can go out and rock shows and get proper response. That's all I love. But I figured as a, as a, a comical joint, it had me cracking up up there and a few things he was saying. Going back to like 05, 06, man, TD, he was gunning after anything, anything to get that get that attention on us. You so, know what I'm saying? So you would have done the same thing in, in, in a few years back? Hell, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we made we made a few we made a few mistakes like that, you know. That got us a little bit of a uh, backlash. I don't want to speak on it, but uh, definitely, definitely, man, we was out there hungry, you know. So anything that you know presented itself, you know, we went at it, and, and that's just that's just uh, the mind of a, of a hustle, man. You know, in a business, 
the music business and the streets, you know, you see it right there, go get it, you know, no matter how you get it. So I hope I hope that, you know, if it's working in his favor, man, he continue to, you know, do his thing. So you are flattered. But overall, you're flattered and, and you're able to take in the moment because, Dot, let me tell you, it was a moment. Like, it was a 72-hour period. I do not remember the last time people talked about lyrics that much in years. And I think that's something to really be proud of because we, us people that really live for the culture, it was just fun to have a conversation about something that matters in the game. Yeah, man, definitely, definitely. You know, just just rappers getting back in the booth, you know, and responding to that verse, you know, it's, it's a crazy deal for me. And uh, so a lot, a lot of people put some dope verses on there. Did I you like, like which ones do you like? Did, are there any verses you actually heard and were like, I like this, this is fire? Yeah, I like the Lowe's verse. Uh, Joe Button did his thing. Joel. A lot, a lot of people with different approaches, you know. I like everybody. They had their different approaches. They were stating their facts and stating how they feel. Um, Joey had the, 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 you know, facts in his verse. A few things that he felt. Uh, that post had the comical, comical joint. Uh, those were slipping his words, you know, and, you know, putting that putting that spunk on. I think he had the, the killer thing, though. Yeah, Los. So Los was your favorite joint. Interesting. Yeah, Los killed out of, out of everybody. Uh, but the number one, the number one joint at the, at the top of the list, at the top of the list had to be a uh, chocolate drop. <laughs> oh, oh, chocolate drop! I saw that. That was um that little short, that little short crazy dude, right? <laughs> yeah, Kevin, Kevin Hart. <laughs> that dude, that dude, funny. You know, he made he made light of the situation. You know, because after a while, you know, it, it started to become a little bit oversaturated. Nah, nah, son. You you took that the wrong way. I don't think he was joking. I think I think Kevin wants war, yo. <laughs> he probably do. He probably do. But I like I like what he did though, you know, because after a while it becomes so so oversaturated and so corny after a while, you know, you need to put that, that light and that touch back on it. You know what I'm saying? I start to feel like hacker shack. <laughs> 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 So, um, in addition to all the responses that have been on record, obviously this is something a lot of people have spoken about. Did you did you see anyone, you know, any of your fellow peers in hip hop speak on the the verse in a way that you thought was uh, interesting or compelling? Oh uh, yeah, um, the, the Mano interview I caught up on, it uh, made a lot of sense because that's the same way, you know, be, me being from L.A., you know, and my peers, my rap peers around me, that's how we used to feel about. Um, our radio as far as people, the radio supporting us or, you know, gestations in general. What did Mano, what did Mano say exactly for people who missed it? Uh, I think he, I think he was speaking on, you know, New York supporting their artists, you know, radio stations supporting their artists and things like that, of that nature. And uh, it made me go back to how, me being an L.A. artist, how we used to feel the same thing. And uh, it was really... I had to check myself, you know, and, and, and look in the mirror and say, you know what? Even if radio, you know, don't know who I am, they, want, they want, don't want to get out here and support it, I still have to make the best uh, of what I have as far as my music and spreading it out. So I basically looked in the mirror and I sat back and re-evaluated my, re my whole situation. And when I did that, I sold out my first show in L.A. with no radio. I sold out my first show in New York. You did what I'm saying? With no radio. And, um, uh, it just brought me back to that because I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree with what he was saying, you know, as far as the people supporting. It's really, it's really not the, the radio, but the people, you know what I'm saying, supporting. I didn't have a song on the radio, but when I went out in the streets in L.A., the people actually stood behind me. I have to be realistic with you too and with with the New York audience because I, I go to more underground New York hip hop shows than just about anyone. I was at a few this week alone. The fact is the scene in LA, the under for, for as phony as LA is on like the commercial level, the underground scene in LA has always remained pretty vibrant and like cats come out and support local LA music like that's something that's actually existed through a lot of these lean years in New York y'all have really consistently kind of remained more of a, a supportive community and I think that's something 
New York needs to keep in mind if we're hoping that in the coming months and years we're to get a rapper, one of our rappers to the spot that you're in, it's going to require the kind of support you were receiving from the from the people back in L.A. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's definitely true. I definitely agree with that. But from what his perspective, what he was saying, he was basically saying, yo, let's look, ourselves, let's look in the mirror and reflect, you know, right now, rather than, you know, reaching out on the opportunity, on the hype, on the hype that's going on right now, you know what I'm saying? That's why I can respect, you know, what he said on that interview more than anything, you know, because you have to reevaluate yourself and, and, and look in the mirror and see different, different avenues. You know, I, I, I consider New York one of the most, you know, as far as hustle, you know, the, the elite, you know, at the top, you know, as far as hustle, you know, you have people on the corner, you have different avenues, you have the labels, you have streets, and how to maneuver through the avenues, you know, that makes you stand out as an artist and to reflect on that, for him to reflect from New York, you know, that's a bold statement. It's not true, that truth. You know, the same way we used to hate the truth in, in, in L.A. No, you're, you're right. That's a very good point. Shout out to Mano. Um, so, uh, real quick, of course, of course we have rock the bells coming up, um, in New York, October 4th and 5th. I'll be hosting all black hippies going to be there. Are you excited about doing a huge New York show after all of this? Uh, definitely, 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 man. You know, New York's probably one of my favorite places to go to, you know, just off the vibe, off the hustle, off the, the way it looked, you know, that. That, that, that's just that feeling, that grimy look, the gloomy look. You know what I'm saying? I'll be in the studio, I'll make some of my best records. You know, i make some of my best performances on the stage. You know, i vibe out with some of the most, you know, creative people out there. So, be going down there and walking them streets, man, and being on the stage. Yeah. How's that Schoolboy Q oxymoron album sounding? Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, who's out there? He played a few records. Played a few um, new records that I haven't heard, you know, just because I've been gone, but... Yeah, man, we competing. We competing inside our own camp. You know what I'm saying? Schoolboy Q is out to make one of them classics. You know, better than mine, better than anybody that's out there that put music out. So that's how we feel. That's the nature that we have, and he's doing that. All right, last questions. Uh, how long are you planning on chilling out? Like you can, you we can almost say now that you're end. You're at the end of this good kid, mad city cycle, and you're kind of going to be in that in between period. How long do you imagine you'll be on the shelf before you try to drop the the next album? Man, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, I've been writing, been locked in, uh, just writing thoughts down. Um, I don't want to wait too long. I don't want to wait too long, but also I don't want to rush things. I want to make sure the music works. So I don't have a tentative, you know, time of release, but I'm, I'm definitely thinking about it and working. All right. Um, listen, Kendrick, thank you very much for calling, my friend. I'm going to see you in L.A. for Rock the Bells, and then we'll see you back here for Rock the Bells October 4th and 5th. Anything else you want to um, say to the, the good people in New York City? Yeah, love. Yeah. Appreciate you, fool. Appreciate the city of New York. Uh Appreciate the rap, the rap culture, you know, the hip hop. And one thing that I want people to take, you know, from the verse is uh, not just live in, in, in the moment of perfection, but the moment of perfection for the rest uh, of your career or the rest of the year or in general, just in hip hop. Everything shouldn't evolve around just the hype, you know. My whole thing is to inspire to better people or better myself, you know, forever. You know, and this thing that we call rap, this thing that we call hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So, I see you done stuck your head out to Rosenberg and people trying to chop your head off out there. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you understand uh, the, 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 the feeling of, of knowing to, to, to better the culture. You know, and I feel that's why you took up for yourself and you took up for what hip hop really means. And that's strive for perfection and try to challenge each other well listen you know as well as anyone does that when i first met you a couple years ago i didn't know a whole lot about black hippie i wasn't like some from the first day following everything you won me over you know what i'm saying listening to your music and hearing section 80 and then hearing good kid mad city and watching what your movement has been as a guy who's been fighting for hip-hop since i got here 
I, it was a breath of fresh air. And everyone like me feels that way. So for me, it wasn't even sticking my neck out. It was just saying what a lot of other people already felt. And, you know, cats who weren't paying attention and don't understand what you're about, they may be tight now, but they're going to figure it out as uh, as this story gets uh, gets told as time goes on. Yeah, definitely. Definitely serious about this thing, man. Definitely serious about it. You know, so as long as we keep inspiring each other, that's what it is. My guy, Kendrick Lamar, you got a chance. You got a chance to do some major things in this game and, and be up there with the names that you talked about on that song. I, I think you have a, a good chance to be there, man. Just uh, keep going the way you're going. We'll see you back here for Rock the Bells in early October. 